So, just to sum it all up, we lost Dick Gregory, we had Eclipse, we've had a tornado, um, we had the McGregor fight, and um, I think Trump's going to do something stupid by the end of the day, I, I don't know. Or did he do something yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago? But, I'm summing it all up. And when you sum it all up, we had a pretty tripped out last week. The green screen is back there for your use. So, last week was a uh, pretty, um, um, I don't know, it was... It was uh, the Dick Gregory thing, Jerry Lewis, but I'm really sad about the Dick Gregory thing, there's a lot of knowledge lost, that, uh, you know, it is what it is, Dick Gregory taught a lot of people a lot of things, and uh, he uh, enlightened a, a few minds on the way, so uh, that's my Dick Gregory I really have been leaving these, uh, the rest in peace videos and all that stuff. I let it go. I don't even think I did a rest in peace Prince video. And you know I love me some Prince, man. Prince was my number one idol back in the day. You know, growing up, you know, shit, we got they heard Dirty Mind record and shit. Y'all don't even know about Dirty Mind or, or, you know, Do Me Baby and shit like that. Y'all motherfuckers is just like, ah, oh, musicology. Purple Rain. We, we had Prince of the Time before they was, you know, popping the most. So, um, that was then. So what you guys got now, um, you got, what's the guy's name? Um, two rings, wait a minute. Two belts, like a championship belt, wait a minute. Two chains! Wait a minute, there ain't two chains. They got somebody named Two Something. We had Tupac, but rap was, you know, meaningful, but, you know, you guys got, um, uh, you guys got Justin Bieber and shit for rap. And uh, Justin Bieber's y'all number one R&B male vocalist and shit. Um, what do we have? We had what? Luther Vandross with Teddy Pendergrass. Teddy was before Luther. Yeah. We even had George Michael. He was kicking. That was us. We had George Michael. You guys didn't have nobody like George Martin. We had George Martin. We had Sex and Madonna. We had Adult Madonna. You know, we had the two Madonnas. Y'all got um, uh, Lord's Moms. So, um, uh, what is it? So, I'm, I'm gonna, am I going to talk for 40 minutes today? Um, probably not. I got too much work to do. Um, everybody knows I'm fucking scatterbrained. I cleaned this fucking room up 900 million times, and I can show you. It looks like a bomb fucking went off in here. It's me. I fucking blew fuck this shit up. I don't know how. It's the fuck. I start like 15 million projects at once. I need a fucking intern and a goddamn crew or something. I think my brain is like fucking 15, 15 million different places and shit at once. So. What would have happened if you would have won the $700 million? Well, this is what would have happened if I would have won. I had $15 million project set up over here. I was going to try to buy every home that I've ever lived in. Probably the whole block. Every home. Even when I lived in apartment complexes back in the hood, I had grand plans for that $700 million. So, uh, what else? Hmm. I don't know. We had the eclipse, and uh, I saw some stuff on TV where it had the little white lights moving. 
And then all of a sudden that feed went out. And then later they, they showed the little spots on the sun, you know. Like I've seen them before. But where they had this little white dots moving, now you got the little International Space Station. I'm like, hey, that wasn't there in those other pictures. I didn't see when the space station popped up and went across. Saw them two little white dots moving. And they lost their feet. <laughs> I saw them back on TV, y'all. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. And I don't really give a shit. I'm tired. I'm getting old. And I see the end of the light at the top. Peter wants me to start it up. I think it started today. So, yeah, I can start my computer today and start doing all the research. Oh, I've done all this research for like in the last 11 years on a subject that really has gotten out of hand lately. So, <coughs> I'm thinking about doing my life story next. To do my life story. Then, um, I don't know. Might be interesting enough to make somebody cry. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm gonna do what I gotta do and uh, fade the fuck away. You know, fucking tired. You see little motherfuckers get up here and shit, put on shit, and act all super flamboyant and shit. But uh, I was pointing out to somebody the other day. How many people transition from YouTube to television that have killed themselves? Check that shit out. Them some fucked up numbers, man. Motherfuckers taste a little bit of YouTube playing. They get on TV and die. What the fuck? Ha! I laugh at shit like that. That is the ultimate fucking comedy. It's because, oh, oh, I'm great, I'm great, and they puff a person up, and that motherfucker takes the ultimate suicide bomb itself to fuck up out this bitch. And what kind of motherfucker does that? And I hate to say this, there's a lot of people who commit suicide every fucking day, and there ain't nobody talking about that old lame ass shit. But if this world is so fucking bad that there's demons in your head, somebody telling you that you've got to kill yourself to make the world better for somebody else. You need to snatch that motherfucker and go to prison for the rest of your life. Because the next person to tell me that I'm going to kill myself or go kill somebody else, I'm going to kill that person. And when somebody tells you, go kill somebody, you kill that motherfucker. Because you have the power to kill that motherfucker. Because I do not think that it... People, there are not that many people out here in this world willing to kill themselves. Think about it. And this is this is just what we I just thought about. It. Who in the fuck wants to kill themselves? Think about it. Life is fucked up. It'd be better without me. I'm gonna leave. Don't work like that. Some deeper shit. Some deeper shit make a motherfucker want to kill himself because this is this world is fucked up. Not fucked up for me to want to go kill myself, and definitely not so fucked up to where I gotta go kill somebody else to feel good about myself. That's some bullshit. And then somebody's like, "Why do you always say if you ever go postal, you go into court?" It's because who is mad enough to go kill somebody at work and is sad enough to kill themselves? It's illogical. Makes no sense to me logically. Logically, the mind should not work. Self-preservation is the number one key. If self-preservation is the number one key, how can you find a way out and preserve yourself by killing yourself. Brain sickness? Zoom in. Is it just stupidity? 
or sad or sad brain illnesses. It don't make any logical sense. I have my makeup on, so I don't look like the normal me. Or it's one of those shows where the Illuminati makes you think of guys in his garage, but then they put him on real TV and kills himself. Not gonna. So, um, what do you do? Let's look at this fucking mess I gotta clean up. And I should have it cleaned up in one day. I'm old. But I'm going to work for somebody else this week. Oh, I'm back now. Next year. Not has been an illegal hit. Sports Center with Mike and Mike brought to you by DraftKings. Draft the perfect lineup in the oh, I'm just fucking a uh, fantasy sports book. I'm playing this up a little bit. I'm going to put some new furniture out here. Um, the area has been clean somewhat of where it's been. I just think that get that shit off there. That's got to go. Oh, that's just a covering right there. That whole corner right there. That has to be cleaned out and leveled before next weekend. Where the big white tarp is with all the chairs on it. There's going to be a jumpy for the children. And right there in the greenhouse. It's going to be covered. Must be covered. Jumpy house with kids. Way. Greenhouse. Must be covered. If you don't show respect for your kids, you shouldn't have any. So you're over here has got to be tightened up too. As you see, you got the little bow sit surveillance cameras <laughs> built into these little cheap lights. Ah, it's all grainy and shit. Like, what are they going to never catch nobody? It's grainy. Yeah, let me see what's going on over here in this section. Like I said, all this shit's got to come off the grill here. This weekend's drink is. That's coming down. Failed project. I need to get somebody else to set that shit. This computer's not reading it. This area has to be cleaned up. There's a lot of people sleeping still. Who gives a fuck? So I have to clean this up too. This whole area used to be the screen room. It's got to go. All these things I do is already temporary anyway. Who cares? You know, who builds long term structures? I'm going to build a fucking pyramid back here so people can find it thousands of years later and not know how I built it. Fuck, I hate it last time I did that. You notice, I got this. I, can't, I don't want you to hear none of that. Everybody after the fight was like, I was surprised that McGregor got that many hits on him. The guy hasn't fought in two years. McGregor is a hell of a lot younger than him, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're like, he's got to hold up. No, I think if he would have went in there early, he could have got the knockout early. He wasn't even hitting McGregor. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, the real challenge of a fight is you hitting that motherfucker at 99% when you're at 99%. Don't just wait and you're at 84% and this guy is at fucking 36 and shit because he's like, I'm in here with Mayweather. I can't believe it. Like he even said, it was too easy. It was too easy. That's what McGregor said. So, um, all I did was say hit him, Floyd, because I know about the history of the great white hype fights. Whenever there's fights like this of this magnitude in the United States of America, a black person is killed and or murdered when the black fighter wins. This is a known fact. 
and it has been going on since niggas and fur coats riding around with white women. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, um, wow, I took it there. Wow, that was a little far, wasn't it? So, um, I love the fight. It was a good fight. Uh, Dick McGregor hold his own against a washed up old boxer. No. If McGregor was fighting uh, upstart, a, a young guy, you know, that's just getting into boxing, that's about, you know, the same as Mayweather is right now. I think the same thing when it came out, the young boxer with the little experience, you know, would have beat McGregor. On the other hand, a young boxer like one of these young lions they got coming up would have took out McGregor in probably the second round. You know, McGregor appeared bigger than, <laughs> than Mayweather. He was like, to me, on my screen, <laughs> that, that motherfucker was big. I'm like, okay. That's how he's holding him off. Plus that jab, that stiff jab arm, it was like an arm bar it was just right there. He was like, you know, he only back off that arm. Plus that arm also gave Mayweather a measuring stick. He saw that motherfucking arm out there so long, and he he, he went up to the arm like, <laughs> check your arm out, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was a matter of time. You know, you you let the guy measure you like that. One thing I liked about McGregor that he was switching off pretty effectively to me. I like the way he was switching. I could see how I could throw somebody off. But when he was switching back, it was not as smooth as the original transition. So, if you was any good, you would probably catch him switching back. But you can't probably you probably couldn't catch him switching. You see what I'm saying? I I, I don't know, but um, it was a good fight. But you know, could Mayweather rather have taken him out early? Yeah, I think he could have. But how much energy would it have cost him? To push this young guy back. That. Is the key. Now if you wanted to knock him out early. How much power. On a power bar. <laughs> for the gamers. How, how much how much on the power bar. You think he got. Anybody ever play a boxing game. Knows. That you punch yourself out. And you tire yourself out. Leaning on a guy. You know, so, I don't know. I think if he would have pressed him early, he would have got hurt late after the guy would have made it through it. If, uh, you know, McGregor would have made it through him, you know, trying to knock him out early, supposed, you know, you know throwing 40% of his energy on, on, on the first two rounds, like, here, I'm going to just throw 40% at it and see what happens. And then he could have knocked him out, or if he would have survived that 40%, I don't think it would have helped him in the later rounds. So, hey, what did he do? He wore him down. But, listen to what McGregor said. You can't make no judgment based on what you saw or what you think you saw. He wasn't in the ring. You have to listen to what McGregor said. And McGregor said, it was too easy. And he thinks he could have beat him up there to let him fight. Now. How many times have McGregor been knocked the fuck out? I don't know. I don't check his schedule. I ain't checked his record. I'm not his goddamn position. I don't give a fuck how many times he's been knocked out. It's not my personal business. I don't care. But if I was into boxing and MMA like I used to be, I still wouldn't give a fuck. I just like watching the fights. I'm not a fanatic. So, in the end, public did not see, the public could not see, the public could not see this guy get knocked out. It would have been bad. 
it would have been real bad in America. But do I think he was going to come back? Do I think if he would have got to last until the, to the, you know, do I say until he get to the corner? What is he going to do? I think if Mayweather really wanted to knock him the fuck out, as soon as he came out the corner, after his last break, he should have rushed him harder, because he was going down in the ninth. If the ninth would have been another 15 seconds, he would have been done. So you figure in that break, a couple good shots to get him right back wobbly. So after the break, he didn't chase him down fast enough to put them good shots on him fast enough for him to try, you know, he, come on, the man had about a minute left. Do you give him a minute? Do you let that guy hit him in the head a couple more times and break his neck? Do you let him get killed in there to prove a point? I was thinking about that too before the fight. Like, what happens if this dude just stand there and get his neck broke? And near the end of that fight, I could see him getting his neck broke. I could see him getting hit. I could see if they would have let him go, he would have got hit in the head about at least three, four more times. At least three, four more times solidly. And that could break your neck. You could just brain damage. You could have some hemorrhaging upside in the head. He could have died fighting. So, was it a good fight? Like he said, let the man put me down. If I'm going to get knocked out, let him put me down. And MMA is a hell of a lot of rougher sport than boxing. They be blood all over the place. I mean... You're on the ground and somebody elbowing you upside the forehead and shit. So I can understand where he's coming from. Like, just let him knock me out. But boxing is a gentleman's sport. You don't sit and watch somebody kill somebody just because you can do it. The fuck? Shadow's in a weird place. Huh? Give my shadow right. More artistic that way. So, um... Yeah, what is it? It's a good fight. That's about all it was. So, let's get to another topic. Look up the history, though, of those great white hype fights, and you'll see that if he would have got knocked the fuck out laid on his back, that shit would have been all in the streets. Brothers would have been going to the store and get a soda. Man, that fight was great. Get home bloodied like a motherfucker. Bandages would have been going down. But, like I said, America couldn't see that guy get knocked out. Ah, well, fuck it. Well, got Texas. Texas. The biggest state now with the biggest problem. What's up with this cleanup, man? Once again, ingenuity of the human mind. I'm flabbergasted about the great nonsensity of the whole situation. There are places that have been in drought. There have been places that need water. And yet and still, we have super flood Texas, what they call it, double, look, remember how they had super storm Sandy? Super storm Sandy. Yeah, there's triple S. Now they got double H. Hurricane Harry. Hurricane Harry. And once again, we have the Army Corps of Engineers waiting to get orders. We have empty oil tankers. This is Texas, so you know they got oil tankers and tanker cars and all kind of shit. 
get some pumps, pump up this water, put it on barges, put the water in anything, send it to purification factories, and spray that water onto the fucking earth. Don't waste this water. A little receipt, suck that shit up, ship it out of there. Clean it. Get it out of there. Send that water to where water has to be. We are human beings, for Christ's sake. Can't we suck this water up with those big-ass helicopters that suck up water for fire, you know, for fires and go fly it somewhere and dump it? Why don't we start using our brains like that? Why don't we start sucking this water up, purifying it, and sending it to places that need water? Why don't we start doing that? Maybe the next time there's a fucking blizzard, we should collect all the ice and send it to places that need water. But no, we can't do that. We gotta let that shit just subside. Let it subside. Let everything get run. When we have the technology, and suck that shit up. I tell you what, if I made a nuclear vacuum cleaner that can suck up uh, 100 gallons of water every 32 seconds, Somebody will be able to turn it into a nuclear water bomb. I bet you use it then. Suck up all the water, then explode it over somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, it'll work. Oh, suck it up somewhere and lay it down somewhere dry and save a world? Nah, not worth it. We have a, a world that's so fucking ass backwards. Let's make people pay for life saving things. Hmm. Gotta make them buy air filters. Can't walk out the house with Bridgestone air filters. <laughs> Breathe that air. Yeah, they have a 24 hour, hour air filter. <laughs> Take that shit off the market. Fuck that. 24 hours? Shit. Gotta sell them motherfuckers 30 minute air filters. <laughs> Tell me. Kind of world where you know, our government like, yes, you should sell people air filters. Yes, it'd be good. We can make what, fifteen percent on the taxes, and then yeah, air filters would be good for America. Mm-hmm. Air filters. You want to write? Why do rich people don't need one? Hmm. They got air pills. What? Where's the logic of that? Corporations can do anything they want to do to us. Our fucking senators and governors. Wait, wait, no. Senator. I forgot how the fucking shit works. The Senate and the Congress. These son of a bitches don't give a fuck. Where they live at? I think in the future, you need to get rid of. Vote, vote me in. I have more money than you. I know people with connections. I should be in this place. I can make things happen for you just like me. <laughs> but they have horns. <laughs> oh, there's a picture of the horns right there. <laughs> Don't deal with the devil, y'all. Hey, so a few months ago, I was on this little tangent, you know, about the. Was it the Baker's Beacons as a rebellion, right? You know, and all the blacks and the whites had got together, and the rebellion was so strong they fought for over a year for justice and equality for indentured servants and slaves and everything. And then, when the indentured servants and the slaves, well, they gave the indentured servants freedom for three months, but they didn't do nothing for the slaves. They even took rights away from other people. Well. That happened. So, that was the deal with the devil. That's why you don't deal with the devil. It's, uh, 700 years later, look what happened. So, um, this world we're in, how we're charged by the big corporations for everything. Somebody told me something about Monsanto, and you know, when they, when they buy a farm, they, you know, over, they over fertilize or something. They, 
And then when the wind blows and, and, and it would get in your crop, they'd charge you for germinating your crop or they'd take your crop. How would this government let that shit happen? How would this government let a corporation move in? That's like somebody moving right next to Hollywood, you know, and building their own, you know, movie studio. Just say Universal Studios is right there, and they build theirs right next to Universal Studios, right? And they got big old ladders, and you're looking over the fence. And everything they see happen over in this yard, they start doing it in their yard. And then they say, you know, our movies are so similar that we influenced your movie makers and you don't give us your movie, we'll just take it because we fertilized your movie. <laughs> what kind of shit is that? You put your chemicals next to my farm. And then you come test my crop. Yep, it's been germinated by my farm. This is our crop now. What the fuck? I come over there and burn your fucking shit down. I would. I would burn your shit down and be in prison forever. Just your crops, not your houses or your employees. And then everybody knows that that Monsanto and those companies like DuPont were, you know, adding genetically altered shit, you know, the corn will sterilize you, and you're giving that shit to your fucking baby almost, oh, he likes the corn, and they know Hispanics love corn here in California, boy, they be selling corn on the street, it's all fucking sterilizing people, what kind of fucking shit is this, what kind of world is this, they think they're gonna be able to reverse this shit? Oh, my grandkid got, he's had a sleepover and ate corn. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. Justin, no. Oh, oh. These people don't give a fuck. Then I saw some video with Bill Gates talking about genocide. Oh, wait a minute. Death panels and, and the unworthy and all that shit and, and the overpopulation of who? Who was unworthy? You know? So let me get out of here. Got some fucking work to do. I get all place all cleaned up and camouflaged and shit. Family ready. Kid friendly. So what we gonna do as a people? As a people, are we gonna just sit back and allow the corporations to take over? Are we gonna can our politicians like we should? We should sack their asses. Politics should be like the fucking draft. What do you mean? You're 40 years old now. You gotta go serve Congress. What the fuck? I gotta go do six months in Congress. Son of a bitch. Everybody needs a chance to govern this place. Not those uh, people who can scrape up some money and then ask us to vote for them because they're the same as us when they have no money. When they're around all that influence and shit, they get fucking corrupted every fucking time. Term limits are not fucking working. These career politicians, they got ladders. I'm going to do this for 25 years, and then I'm going to do this for 32 years, and BAM! <laughs> I've been paid for and bought 20,000 times. These people don't give a fuck. They all need to be taken out and shit on. No. He thought I was going to say shot. <laughs> no. You don't kill people. You take all their fucking money from them. You know. 
That's what the fuck needs to happen. And they need to audit all of those people. This is where you started out, and now you have millions of dollars. How is that possible? We didn't pay you that much. How you got that? And you've been doing this for how long? You gonna be doing this for that? Uh uh. It's not like that. The U.S. government is not lifetime. You don't do no lifetime shit there. There's no lifetime contract when you work for the fucking government. And these people, their grandfathers and great grandfathers and uncles and grandpas and great grandmas and grandmas and all that bullshit. Everybody's been in fucking politics forever. That's not cool. It's time to share the power. It's time to give it up. You need to stop uh, dividing land that you don't own. Taking shit from people. <laughs> They're doing wrong by their people. Well, you're doing wrong by yours. What are you going to do? Install a corporation? I can see it right now. We're sending. Hold on, folks. This is a big one. We're sending. Where's the card? Where's the card? You good? Citicorp is now going to Afghanistan to take over the government. Citicorp is taking over the government, along with Bloomberg and Texaco. Is that what it's come down to? Multi-billion dollar corporations are now playing the game instead of people. To the country. Oh, instead of, instead of self-made governments by those elitists who have the money, who can create the power, and those people of governments who, that don't have money, that have created their government out of dirt and nothing, they must give up their power and their land. What kind of world are we in? If somebody with more power comes to us, our leaders will give us up and then we have to deal with it. Well, they were too strong. So we had to let Putin come in here and, and clean things up. And what, what if the North Koreans came into America and start giving people jobs? What if Russia came here, opened up a bunch of companies, and only started giving black people jobs? What if China did that and only gave Mexicans jobs? Because yeah, if we here in America, only Hispanic people work, so we're only going to hire Hispanic people. What if a, a, a trillion dollar company came in here and decided to take care of the poor people of America? What if one of those corporations believed in the people? Would that change the world? That the people... We're the shareholders of the corporation that got to run the world. Would that help? If the people ran the corporation that ran the world? So, I don't know what to think, people. This has been 40 Minutes with the Real AIX. And you have been too. Thank you for your time. Get out, clean up your yard. It's going to be hot today. And if you're in Texas, I'm sorry. I wish I could help you. If I was in charge, I'd have everybody over there with a goddamn sucker truck, a sucker pumper, or, or, or every kind of pump sucking that water and sending it to whoever fucking can clean it and use it. You want how many gallons? We got these big giant tankers that used to carry oil. We can fill them full of water and we'll send you three tankers right now. We can fill 20 tankers right now. How many tankers of water do you need? That's how this world should work. But it don't. It's ran on greed and ignorance. And those people should be vanquished from this planet. We all have the power to just wish them away. We need to connect our minds together like they once were 
and kill this entity that was bothers and kills us, frustrates us with this drama, kills us with this stress, and poison us through the food which we are told we have to eat. Remember those dietary plans? You gotta eat this and eat that and eat this and eat that. Of course, when they put the ingredients together, a lot of the times they come out to be poisonous. Bless you. And may the real God or the real creator set us all free. <laughs>